All right, so in this video, we're going to be calculating the size of a binary tree. So this quantity that we're gonna be calculating for a binary tree will be covering both an iterative and recursive approach for this particular problem. And we'll be also going over a Python implementation that we'll code up at the end of this video once we cover the concept of how to calculate the size of a binary tree. And we'll be continuing to add the functionality, in this case for size, to our binary tree class that we've been coding in this series of videos. So let's go ahead and define specifically what the size of a binary tree is defined to be. So very simply, the size of a binary tree is simply the number of nodes in that tree. So here on the right, we have a very simple example of a binary tree, and the number of nodes in this tree are one, two, three, four, five. There's five total nodes in this tree, so the size of this tree is five. So what we're going to be doing first is going over an iterative approach of this uh, algorithm to calculate the size. And this approach is going to be very similar to what something we've already seen before, namely the traversal algorithms that we covered for binary trees. So I'd encourage you to go and watch those videos if you've not seen them already, if you want to try to take a stab at coding this up yourself before we go through it together because the ideas of that, that ideas of the traversal are going to be very similar to the ideas of calculating the size of a tree. So the reason that they're so similar is because when you traverse a tree, you must visit every node. So you essentially touch every node in that tree. Indeed, when you calculate the size of a tree, you want to go through each node and keep count of all of the nodes that you've processed in the tree. And you want to make sure that you cover all of the nodes in the binary tree that you've given. So the iterative approach is going to be very similar to the one that we saw that was an iterative approach for traversals. Namely, we're going to be making use of a stack data structure to keep track of the nodes that we've visited thus far, and also to help us to calculate the size of a given tree. So let's go over that first. This should look familiar if you've seen that video. So again, we'll stick with our example binary tree here, and I have an, a stack which was initially empty, but we've pushed on the root node of this binary tree. So that's the way that we're gonna start off in this algorithm. And what we're gonna be doing is we're going to pop off the nodes in the stack, and we're going to check if they have any children. If they do, push them onto the stack as well and just keep going in this fashion until the stack is empty. All the while, when we push a node on the stack, we'll be keeping track of the count. So as I mentioned, we start off by pushing the root node on the stack. So the size is, of course, going to be at least one. We'll, of course, need to check that the root of the tree is not null. If it's not null, we'll go ahead and push that root on and we'll increment the size count to one. So as I mentioned, we're going, we're going to continue to process this stack until it's empty, pop off the first element, which is this node one, and then we'll check if it has any children. So indeed, one has two children, it has nodes with data elements two and three. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add those to the stack, and then while we do so, we'll go ahead and increment the count by two because we've processed two further nodes in the tree. So now our stack has these two elements on it. So we'll go ahead and take the top of the stack off, which is two in this case, and then we'll ask, okay, does two have any children? So indeed, two has two children, nodes with data elements four and five. So we'll go ahead and push them onto the stack. And in doing so, we'll increment the count by two since we've just pushed two further nodes onto the stack. So now we're going to process the node three, which was pushed on earlier. We're going to take that off and see if it has any children, which it does not. So it doesn't have any children, so we'll go ahead and just pop it off the stack and move on to the next element in the stack. Similarly with four, there's no children there. Size, again, stays the same. Since there's no children for this particular node, we've just popped it off the stack and just kept processing the stack. And the same thing happens with five. We'll take it off the stack, check if it has any children. It doesn't, so then we just take it off the stack and we're pretty much done with this algorithm. So this iteration, this iterative approach should look very familiar, again, if you went over the traversal algorithm. So let's go ahead and code this up in Python. So here I am in the terminal, and what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the size of the binary tree, which we saw in the example. So this is just sort of a comment representation of that tree. I've gone ahead and created that tree here. So this is the uh, exact representation of the tree that we saw in the slides. And then instead of calculating the height, I want to calculate the size of this tree. So we need to go ahead and create a function which we'll call size. It's also be a member of our class. And what we'll do here is we'll go through the steps that we just mentioned on the slides to calculate the iterative approach of calculating this quantity.
So the first thing that we'll do is we'll define a variable. Well, actually, before we do that, let's check if the root of the tree is none. So if self.root is none, then there's no nodes in the tree. The tree is empty. We're just going to return zero since the size of the tree must be zero because the root of the tree is none. So if the root is not none, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll declare a stack variable. So I'll call that stack. And again, from a previous video, which if you are using the code that is provided on this GitHub, uh, the stack class that we've defined in a previous video in this series will be defined. So I'm defining a stack, which is really just a glorified list that we've enhanced or uh, somewhat limited to perform as you would expect a stack to perform. So it has the push and pop operations. So we define a stack. And what we're going to do is we're going to say um, stack.push. We're going to go ahead and push on the root. So now that we know that it's not null, we're going to go ahead and push on the root to our stack. And then we're going to say while stack, so while it's not empty, we're going to keep going. So we're going to say node is equal to stack.pop. So we're going to take the first node off the top of the stack and we're going to look at it and we're going to ask if it has any children. So we're going to say if node that left. So if there is left child of that node, we'll go ahead and increment our size, which we probably should define here. Let's say size is equal to one, because again, we've pushed on the root node. So we know that the size of the tree is at least one. So if the left child exists, we'll go ahead and increment the size by one. And then we'll say stack dot push, we'll push on the left child. So we'll say node dot left and we'll do the very same thing for the right child as well. So we'll ask if there's a right child, let's go ahead and increment that count by one and then push on the right child of that node that we're processing onto the stack. And then after the while loop finish executes, finishes uh, executing, we'll go ahead and return the size. So that's what we'll do there. And that should be all that we need for this function. So let's go down here and let's verify that this actually works. So this doesn't take anything as an argument. Go ahead and write that. I'll clear the terminal and then we'll say Python binary tree. And then we see here, we see five. So the size of this particular tree, again, we know that we have five nodes in this tree, which is correct. So let's go through briefly the recursive implementation of this, which is a bit more concise than the iterative approach. So let's also define, let's call it size underscore to denote it from the iterative version. And what we're going to do here is this size function is going to take a node as well as a parameter because we're going to continually call this size function on itself recursively, of course, and we're going to continue to process the tree in a recursive way with this node sort of advancing throughout the tree. So what we're going to do for our base case in this recursive function is we're going to check if the node is none. So if the node is none, basically if, it, if there's nothing there, if there's no uh, valid data element on this, on this node, we'll go ahead and just return zero. So otherwise what we're going to do is we'll return one plus whatever the size of the left is plus whatever the size of the right is. So let's actually go to the slides. So if we look at this tree here, we start off at the root, we would be able to determine the size of the tree if we knew the size of all the elements on the left subtree and also the size of all the elements on the right subtree. So this type of idea is in some ways similar to the way that we encountered the height function in a previous video on this series where we wanted to calculate the height of this particular node and the reason that we wanted to do that or the way in which was was helpful for us to do that would be to calculate the height of this left subtree and also this right subtree because that's kind of breaking the problem down for us and we just continually do that until we can actually solve the problem so we do that in a recursive manner so if we know the size of this left subtree and we know the size of this right subtree we're going to be able to figure out what is the total size of the tree so in a similar way we can just return one. The one is kind of to denote the size of the root that we're counting from that plus one. And if we know the size of the, so we'll say self.size of the left subtree, and then we, we want to count all the nodes of also the right subtree as well. So self.size underscore node.right. So if basically what we're saying here is return one, which is counting the root, plus left, which all of the nodes on the left, it's a recursive call to calling this function over and over again on the left subtree, 
plus all of the nodes that we're going to encounter on the right. So that's what this self.size node.write is doing. So this very concise function should give us the size recursively of this tree. So let's just go ahead and verify that this actually works as expected. So we'll say tree.size underscore, and we, have, we of course need to pass it the root of the tree. So we'll say tree.root, and then we'll save it, go ahead and clear the screen, and then we'll say python binary tree. And if we do that, we also get five there as well. So it's returning the same answer. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything of the sort, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section of this video. As always, the code for all of this will be hosted on my GitHub, and there'll be a link to that in the description of this video. So thanks again for watching, and have a nice day.